Excellent. The doors are shut, which means the meeting can commence. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight is a very special David Sands Happy Club because we haven't just got one special guest or two special guests, but we've got three special guests and we are feeling our very best. So the first person I'm going to introduce you to is a beautiful lady called Rebecca who works for the United Community. I don't work for them. I'm not employed by them. She's not employed by them. Well, would you like to come up and tell everybody this Rebecca? Thank you. So I'm without further ado, here's Rebecca and she's going to tell you what she does, for who and what she can do for us. Rebecca, after you. I'm not going to talk about me at all. No. Just whatever you're going to talk about. Okay. Here's Rebecca. <laughs> so, um, hi, I'm, 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 I'm Rebecca and I'm United Community, but that's not the thing. really. Um, so, I'm the I've got some news about the meeting that we did in November at the, at the um, Resource Centre when the UN rapporteur came to Jaywick and Clacton to investigate poverty in the UK. Now the first thing is that the UN, you think, the blue flag with the, the picture of the globe on that deals with things in you know, places far away, like when there are natural disasters and wars, but they're actually now being investigated by the, you know, the UN is investigating the UK government, like, like the issue of human rights, like what's going on. So they did this report, so he did this report, and you brilliantly gave evidence. Um, so we invited lots of people from the community to give evidence of poverty, like to give their testimonies to Philip Alston. He did that brilliantly, job done. He's gone away, written a report, and found that 14 million people in this country are experiencing poverty. We're the fifth richest country in the world, fifth richest country in the world, 14 million people living in poverty, now being investigated by the United Nations. It's serious, okay? But what's, what's really good is that he listened, Philip Olsen listened in that report, he really gets it, he, and he's uncompromising in his language. He said, this government needs to be held to account. Universal credit is discredit. I won't go into all the details now, but basically, in Geneva, um, the, the UN has, is going to have this report. It's going to be presented by Philip Holston and some members of civil society to the to the, uh, the UN, and the UK government will have to publicly respond to this report about all these people living in poverty in this country. So that's the process. And there's going to be a meeting. Um, Philip Olson is going to address us again and say thank you for that our contribution to this report at the Jaywick Resource Centre on the 2nd of July. So 2nd of July, there'll be another meeting. And there, we're going to learn about human rights and how we can use them. The university will be at that meeting too. And um, the Essex Human Rights Centre, they'll be there at that meeting. And they, they, were used to, they used to deal with you know, human rights in faraway places. Now, they're dealing with human rights here, but they're, they're gonna help us. They're gonna help us um, learn to use human rights in our campaigns, like to tackle poverty. That's super. So, so there's, and, oh, there's one more thing, yeah. So, before the meeting on the 27th, I'm actually gonna be in Geneva when this Philip Austin is there presenting this report, and the UK, the UK government has to answer the questions. So, We've got an opportunity, any questions that you want to be presented um, and answered by Philip Olsen, you can come and tell me, and that, that will be, um, you can then address that for us in a meeting on the 2nd of July. That's amazing, Rebecca. Thank you very much. Sorry, well <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, you have been given an, am an amazing opportunity. If you can talk to Rebecca before the meeting is out, and tell Rebecca exactly what you want to ask the United Nations. Rebecca will speak on your behalf. So please talk to Rebecca and please get your point across. If you ever wanted to get your voice heard, you won't get a better opportunity in this. So please, ladies and gentlemen, take advantage of this opportunity and let's tell them exactly how it is. Thank you, Rebecca. Right, the next part of our meeting is we have the RSPCA and they have come to give us a lovely talk about how to look after ourselves and animals. Is that right? So without further, what are your names again? Anna. Anna. And Kate. Anna and Kate. So can we have a big round of applause for Anna, please? <laughs> Anna is going to tell us lots of things that we didn't know, and this is going to help us and all the animals. 
So over to you, Anna. Good evening, Thank you. Um, Nice to see you all here. Um, so I'm the branch manager from the North Essex RSPCA. Um, when we talk about the RSPCA, a lot of people sort of think about the big um, RSPCA. It was a huge um, charity. Um, it's got loads and loads of different branches. So the big RSPCA headquarters um, runs works. It actually runs the inspectorate, which come out and, and, and help <coughs> animal welfare and the animal collection offices to go and help the wildlife that are in need. Um, the UK um, is split up into Wales and England, and that is split into 170 branch areas. And so each area um, is its own separate charity, which is under the RSPCA umbrella, but it's a separate charity that works in that specific area. So I'm the branch manager of North Essex, and North Essex area is the county line between Suffolk and Essex, right the way through over to Takeley. Um, it incorporates Great Dunmow, Braintree, down to Witton, right over to Haybridge, and right the way up the east coast. So you guys are part of, 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 of my area. Um, so as the RSPCA and working in this local area, it's, it's our um, duty to help and look after people and help them to look after their animals. Um, we have a clinic in Colchester, uh, which is on the Harwich Road. Uh, used to have a charity shop at the front, but Sadly, that has ceased to trade. Um, the clinic is just round the back of Compton Road, the Ipswich Road. Um, and we are open uh, Monday to Thursday, 9 to 4, uh, and we're there to help you at any time with any problems that you may have with your animals. We have a vet on site three days a week. Um, and we, we, although we do charge a small amount, it's to cover the costs of the running of the clinic. So we don't make any profit, um, but we actually run at a bit of a loss. Um, but we're there to help people. Um, we have two charity shops that help to fund us. Um, we have one in Pretty Gate in Colchester and one in Frington as well. Um, we do hope to open um, more shops as time progresses, but that is quite a time consuming thing. Um, we have been this year, I mean I've only been in my role as branch manager for North Essex since August of last year. Um, the previous manager retired and, and went off to France to live out her, her twilight years, so happy days to that. Um, but um, since I've come in, I've, I've, I've tried my, my previous career, I was 20 years as a veterinary nurse um, and I've worked closely with charities for the last 10 years um, and I really, really like um, animal welfare and, and feel that it's a real part of, of the UK, we're real animal lovers um, and I feel that everybody should have an animal in their life, it really enhances your life, it gives you something to get up for in the morning um, and they are like your best friend, you talk to them all day, every day. Um, I have been sort of starting to run um, something called Chip and Snip Clinics, um, which um, is for predominantly cats at the moment, but it's a neutering program. Um, so for £10, we will neuter and microchip your cats. Um, and so it doesn't, it doesn't matter whether they're male or female, um, how old they are, they come in, we'll give them a full clinical exam to make sure they're nice and healthy, um, and then we'll give them an anaesthetic, we'll neuter them, give them a knife chip and then you can come and let them take them home. So it's to sort of uh, try to get out there and help people with responsible pet ownership as well. Um, we do do a lot of neutering in dogs and I hope to run some, um, some sort of dog neutering clinics in the future but I'm trying to figure out with my vet the best way to do that because anaesthesia in dogs is, is, is slightly different to cats. Also rabbits as well is something that we're looking into. Um, at the moment, um, fundraising in North Essex RSPCA has been a little slack over the last few years, um, and that's something we're really looking at at the moment, um, because we have a goal in that we're trying to raise enough funds to get ourselves a mobile veterinary unit, um, a clinic in a van, um, so that we, we fully understand that a lot of people don't have the transportation, the means to get to us at our clinic in Colchester. Um, so we're now trying to really push our fundraising to help us uh, raise enough funds to get together to get this mobile clinic, which we then hope that we can come out to Jaywick, Clacton, and all the areas within the North Essex, our area, um, to help people then with their veterinary needs with their animals, um, to help educate um, things like flea, worming, microchipping, neutering, um, and just how you, know, you should be looking after animals in the, sort of the, the best and possible way. Um, Kate, uh, who came with me today, is a uh, fundraiser coordinator um, and she's been helping massively this year. Um, we've got 10 fundraising events already planned for this year. Hopefully we will add more to that. 
Um, and we've got some information packs with us, so if anybody would like some more information about who we are, what we do, and um, telephone numbers and anything like that, that's all in those information packs. Um, I think I'm running out of steam. Ah, no, um, so within our area as well, we do do an awful lot of animal welfare sort of rehoming. Um, so we, work, we do work quite closely with the inspectorate, um, or however we are a separate entity. Um, Danaher Animal Home um, is in Weathersfield, which is just outside Braintree, um, which we work very closely with, so animals that come in via the inspector, or just people from the public that, for whatever reason, sadly have to give up their animals, um, we do try to help where we can. Um, and they're very good at rehoming, um, rehoming our animals for us. Um, have anyone got any questions at all that I might be able to answer? I did, and she said I've got to get the dogs done. <laughs> <laughs> Does the way the communities can help with fundraising? Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, we're always after volunteers, um, and um, you know, when we have our fundraising at different areas, if people want to come along and help us on the stalls, um, that is always greatly appreciated. Um, we've always got roles for volunteers, whether it be shops, dog walking, um, at our fundraising events. Um, we also have um, home checkers, people that have to go out and check people's homes when people want to be home. So we're always open for volunteers. Volunteers is always something that we can, can use for sure, um, definitely. Thank you. Do you look after rats? Huh? Rats? Yes, anything. Yeah. Anything, yeah. We, we look after we cats and rats. Can we give them to you to be home? Well, certainly we can have a discussion about that, but certainly we do. We have anything from stables, Rabbits, cats, dogs, um, you know, we do we host everything. So and we can certainly have a conversation about that and, and see if we can help you out for sure. I'll give my husband to Kathy and his brother to me. Yes, you've got the love of them. We've actually got a dog show here on Wednesday now. Um, I'm not sure, it's uh, August, August the 20th. Second, I think it is, or 24th, something. I think it's the 24th of August. Well, I have been working because we, we were here at the community centre on the 29th of March. Yes, yes, um, yes, yes, yes. Okay. yes I, I remember seeing you there. So, um, I mean, that, we're going to try to do that again until we get our, our mobile clinic up and running. Uh, but certainly that was really great. We, we had loads of people show up and it was um, a really, really proactive day. It was fantastic. Um, so we hope to do that a couple more times. Obviously, we do need the weather for it because we're outside of the gazebo. But um, yeah, we hope to do that a few more times until we get the mobile unit off the ground. It would be nice if you come to the dog show because there's people who... Um, yeah, I, I, I should... Like their dog. Oh, and I'll also speak. a fundraising table at the dog show. Is there really? Well, I'll speak to Danny and see who the... Um, I'll pass you the information over. Dan Thank Casey you. below. And it's Carol, isn't it? Carol? I've got it in my own phone. We'll look that up. We'll look that up. in contact with them. That would be super. Lovely. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. <laughs> that was great. You're amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can we actually try and manage this lady if it's your line that's doing all the time? Yeah, can we, have the, can we have a pack for everybody? Yes, sure. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. Okay, well, we're back to the meeting now, ladies and gentlemen. We've had our two talks with the lovely people. I don't think I can even compare with that. I'm going to have a go because this is what we do. We are the Jamie Sands Happy Club. We want to welcome all people from everywhere to show what we are doing in Jamie, to give Jamie a voice, to give everybody a voice. And that is our main aim. So is there anyone in this group that we haven't spoken to yet that has got something to say that we don't know about? Anyone else in this room? What's going on in Jamie over the last month? What needs to be done to improve Jamie? So I can yeah, boost community kitchen. Tell us about boost community kitchen. It needs to be open again. It is going to be open. And it will be because I'm fed up with really cancelled. Well, Come on and tell us all about it. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Boo, ladies and gentlemen. We all know Boo. Yes, we love Boo. So Boo, can you please tell the whole group what we can do to help and when is it going to open? I don't know. Right. Don't be kitchen is shut at the moment because we can catch your want it as a business. And it ain't a business. It is a community. Every charity. I make no money from it. Not even a wage. I wouldn't mind if I did. So now um, they keep saying they've lost the paperwork, then they've got the paperwork in front of them, then they've lost the paperwork again. So now I'm getting fed up with Weedy Council. I am going to open it again, and I don't care what Weedy Council say, because they're the ones who are stopping it. 
So there's only good we can do as a community to back you up. Can, 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 can I answer a bit? It's not really the council, it's tenure council. Who is the person dealing with? Uh, someone called Joe from Weedy. You, you, you give me his name, I'll speak to him. Yeah, I like that. If I put it all up home, then they just get to the I'm you're talking to, and I know the reason why you've been shut down or whatever, so you get it. Yeah, because they, all they said is they want it as a business, and it is no, not a business. No, I just saw that she was charging it as a business. No, it, like, all it was doing, people were giving me money to pay for the electric, the water, and the rent of the ground. Everything else was donated, all the food's been donated, I've got receipts where people have well, you give me the name of the person and I'll take it All right, thank you, Dan. Well, that seems like a happy ending, Boo. Yeah. Yeah. Dan's on it. Yeah, because everybody comes up, they're back in my house. Perfect, we can't wait. I'll work with you, I'll be pretty ugly around today. No, I can't have them in my house no more. Right, okay. Thank you, Boo, that's marvellous. Okay, have we got any more things to talk about while the meeting is still going? Jo, can we hear talk to Joanne, please? I'm a very sick lady and I've just been away to Adelaide Hospital for treatment where I made the marvellous improvement while I was away. Um, then I've become very poorly since I've been home. My son's worker asked me to get an emergency appointment with the Green Hills today because I'm pissing sick and vomiting blood and I'm very sick to be told. There's nothing to the 25th of June. How does that help me? I do not know what to say about that. What can we do? Dan, is there anything we can do for that? That's horrible, that is. That's... Okay. So what is going on with Green Hills? What are they not doing? What are they not doing? Okay. I will personally phone them up tomorrow. What can I ask Green Hills when I phone them tomorrow? Because I'm talking to them. Tell me, Andy. What can I say to Green Hills? When we when we spoke to them last time, they yep. said that they were going to send me and you their call stats yep. so we could see how quickly they're answering the phone. Yes. And chased them up a few times. And we it had me a ten and a day. So you'd like to see the call stats? Yeah, because then because then we, when people are spending all their phone credit trying to get through, yep. we can at least highlight yep. that. And, and what about the stat, Dan? <coughs> Wow, and other people are waiting hours. It's, it's kind of a left right syndrome, isn't it? Some people for two minutes, some people one hour. Paperwork is Paperwork is coming through. Yes. Yeah, and they told me to wait for a letter, and I'm still waiting. Because I went to see them six months ago. <laughs> okay, I'll bring it all down and I will message them tomorrow and we'll get answers about this. Green Elms, leave it to me. I will phone them in the morning and get you these answers. And I'll make a video before midday telling you the answers. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? And I will not quit until I wake up and go to sleep. How about that? In fact, we love you, Boo. No, I want an appointment. If you get through, thank you, I'll make some <laughs> You might, have to come, you might have to come back with you later. Okay, we don't have Green Elms. Is there anything else we need to deal with community? Joanne. I wasn't going to do this, but I'm now, I'm now just about, I'm forced to be camping over Martello Beach. My landlord served on the 4th of May last year with a 28 day notice. He got fined £5,000 for 43 weeks of He still got done it. We now have no waste pipe. So what will happen, we are riddled and I with rats where they're coming through the holes from outside. Oh. He's failing to do his work, we're now tuned to electrical wiring and because I went away we reckon we've got dead carcass in and I'm back with loads of infections because I've been in the property. I've got environmental health social workers a lot on this, we just come back to downgrade our stuff and get out of the shit hole. But don't you, John Smith Day, because he's an absolute top off. So Joanne, Dan, shouldn't Joanne make a formal complaint about this? There you go, Joe. I'm done. We'll get into this. Sort of. Need the information. Oh. 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 O
Okay, is there anything else to talk about in these meetings with Kevin? Yeah, I was going to try and get a word in for the RSPCA people. My cat's been chipped and all that, but his details need to be changed. And I knocked Gary Gibbs out of the meeting. Well, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Well, Gary Gibbs is going to have to come out and answer the questions that we've got for him. Yeah. Um, Gary Gibbs is going to have to come out and answer the questions that we've got for him. Right, okay, so what you need to do with that um, is. We need to find. Do you, have you got the number of which the chip is? Do you know what? They, the I wasn't given any thing because it was okay. done at the um, Jaywick Community Centre some months or whatever ago when I used to live down at Humber. Right. Because um, I used to have two cats, but the other <coughs> one was more like an outdoor cat. He's been chipped and I've been ringing about, it's got to be about six, seven numbers, but no one seems to be telling me the right info that I need to change. Okay, well, what I'll do if I take your because what we ultimately need is the microchip number that is, is, is your cat's number. Yeah. From that, I can find out exactly which database we need to go to to change your information. So if, if I should take your, your number yeah. and then I can give you a ring and we'll work out how we can get that microchip number from your cat. Right. All cool. right. Brilliant, another happy ending. I've got a French bulldog and he wheezes and poos on my floor every day and I take him out and I walk him, I do everything I meant to do, but when I don't take him to work with me, he does something naughty on my floor. Any advice? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you I've been doing that the last two days, but we have a work, he's ain't too happy. But I, I, I think they call it karma. That was naughty when I was a little boy. What's that, Joanne? I knew my aftershave was bad, but not that bad, <laughs> surely. Maybe I shouldn't wear any. I love you, Joanne. Okay, we've got lots of tonight in this meeting. Is there anyone else that wants to raise anything else so I can email the council and get all the answers we need? Anyone else in the room? Anything you want to talk about? Anything at all? No? So shall I arrange that tomorrow and we'll come and see you? Me, you and Andy, yeah? Alright, I'll arrange it. Okay, I'll arrange for us to be free to meet them and if they can't do that then they can be sacked or whatever. That's what I'm saying. They know that. They yes. that the, the you had there, they well, it's really nice that Andy White and Dan Casey care as much as you do, and that gives us all hope, didn't it, ladies and gentlemen? So, is there anything else to talk about at the meeting? Danny. Apart? Does anyone know anything more new than new wheelie beans? They're coming soon. June. June. You get them in June. Joanne? Lovely ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say thank you to each and every one of you for coming to the Jacob Sands Happy Club. We are giving the community a voice and we're giving other people outside of the community a voice. And we will never stop until everybody is heard. I ain't going to repeat that, have I? Anyway, thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for coming to the Jacob Sands Happy Club and I will see you a month's time on the Thursday. And can you please keep doing whatever you do because we love you all. Shine on, the meeting is not over until 9pm. So please stay, play games, communicate, and this being a youth club for adults as well as a meeting to discuss things. Thank you everybody, shine on. I need some, oh, I've got people that are very bored and they want to be volunteers. So is there a VIP number I can So I can put direct contact with you about all the four playing in the forms. And I'll need that number personally for me, so I can hand it straight over. I might come and do a date myself, but so I can show you how easy it is. And I can make films while I do it, then that will get some people on board. So maybe if you could set up for me. Yes. It's up there, yes. Oh, no, what time are you arriving then? Donna, am I free Sunday, Donna? Yes, I'm free Sunday. Brilliant. So, thanks, Dave. So, what number do I need for you personally? I'm